guys, Lemmy here and welcome back to another video. Last week I talked a little about how to go about starting to sell art commissions online. If you want to check out that video, it'll be linked at the end and if you had any questions in that video that I didn't answer during the video, those questions and answers are pinned to the top of that video's comment section. Today I'm going to be talking about how to go about finding your pricing regarding art commissions. The advice I give today can also be applied to selling original art as well, so consider this information to be somewhat interchangeable. I'm also going to warn everybody right now that the things I'm about to say a lot of people probably won't agree with, and I personally do not think that what I'm saying is incorrect information, but rather it's the truth that a lot of people don't really want to accept. So it may sound mean, but it's really not my intention to hurt anyone's feelings. So please keep in mind that I'm really not intentionally trying to talk down to anyone or demean their artwork, but my views on commission pricing are probably most likely different from other people you have seen discussing this online. Now that we have that disclaimer in place, let's get started talking about prices. First off, I'm going to talk about some factors that go into pricing commissions that will affect the amount of money and the regularity in which you can sell your artwork. One factor is popularity. Do you have a large following of people or a small following of people? Another factor is the level of involvement of your base. Are those people active in the comments section of your artwork? Do they show interest in owning a piece of your art? Obviously, the more people you have, the more interest in your artwork, the better. If you have a very small fan base, this means you have less potential customers. However, if you have a small fan base, but they're very interested and dedicated to your work, that still means you have a relatively large pool of potential customers. The best chance of getting paid more for your work and selling in bulk would obviously be to have a large fan base with lots of involvement. These factors are very important to work on over the years, so develop your community and the base of people who have interest in you. The more people who have interest, the more stable your sales will be. Now we're going to be talking a little bit about what you may want in return for your artwork being sold. And I'm sure you're probably like, duh, I want money, bro. But it's a bit more complicated than that. I divide this into two categories. First is pricing to sell, and the second is pricing to keep. It's up to the artist to pick which selling model works best for them personally. Each artist has different goals, so let's figure out the goals together, and then we'll discuss the models that your goal will fit into. So these are things you want to take into consideration before choosing a model that best suits you. Do you want to sell your art frequently and with regularity? Do you specifically not want to do that? Do you want to have a commission every so often? Do you want to balance commissions so that you continually add to the amount that you have while you're completing the older ones? Do you care more about the amount being sold or the individual price per commission? Do you want to sell less but make more money per artwork? Do you mind selling your artwork irregularly? Keep in mind the answers to these questions as I go on so that you can figure out which model you best fit into. So first we're going to be talking about pricing to sell. This is more strictly the idea of, you know, quote, what your artwork is worth, end quote, and attempting to get as much work as possible. This has a lot to do with the concept of supply and demand. You need to think about how many commissions you want to sell at any given point in time and how many you can handle juggling. This also depends if you want a steady stream of commissions or not. Obviously, you want to get as much money as you can for a commission, but still get a steady flow of work within this business model. This is how I used to run my commissions. My target was to juggle around five commissions at any given point in time, and by the time that I was done with those five, I would have already acquired another five to tackle. 
I had to make money and pay for things when I was going to college, so this model best suited my needs at that time. So how I found my personal price was by starting my commissions off very low. This was a technique that I used to build a lot of interest in commissions very quickly. At the time, I didn't have any commissions under my belt, so I felt like I had to build trust between me and my customers. So let's say you think your art is worth like $30 or something. My advice would be to lower the price to maybe $20 so that it would be a very affordable, good deal for the buyer to purchase. The more interest and commissions you receive, the more you complete and post online, and this acts as advertising to your other followers. When people see there are happy customers out there, more customers will come. So when you start this way, you'll generate a lot of interest quickly and you might become overwhelmed. And this is where the concept of supply and demand really comes in. If there's a ton of demand and you can't keep up with it, increase the cost of your supply or the artwork. This will lower the demand or the amount of customers seeking to purchase. However, you should still be receiving people asking you for commissions. You never want to jack up the price by a huge amount or you may completely lose interest because you're simply asking too much money for what, what you're giving in return. You do this process rinse and repeat, continually raising the prices of your artwork over time until you receive as much money as you can for your artwork without being overloaded by the number of commissions that you continually receive. Then at that point you will have found the price of your artwork. And I totally get it. It sucks at first when you list your artwork for cheap, but it's a good way to figure out what your artwork is actually worth to your customers. This method is best for people who want a large consistent workload and consistent income. Next up is pricing to keep. This model is much simpler and leaves more to the imagination of the artist. So essentially, this is what the artist themselves thinks that their artwork is worth. And in addition to that, it could be even more money than that because they don't want to let go of the artwork in question. Pretty much this is the price that an artist would feel comfortable letting their piece be sold for. The price where you'd be okay with letting go one of your personal treasures and giving it to another person. In this model, you're not hunting down customers or trying to get rid of your artwork. You have a price that you're comfortable with and if other people want to buy the picture, they can. And if it's too expensive for them, then like, who really cares, you know? They can go elsewhere. This model I use when I sell my own original artwork in my store Envy. And I don't have any urgency of letting go my original pieces, so I put them at prices where I may feel all right if someone else owns them. Don't be surprised if your artwork doesn't sell under this business model. After all, it's called pricing to keep. So now that we went over the two business models, I feel like I should talk a bit about a few other key points. First off, you can't simply ask someone, you know, hey Paul, what's my artwork worth? Nobody really knows what anything is worth until they start selling. After all, art is extremely subjective. And just like every person is different, every artist's price is completely different. There are so many factors that go into pricing that you really have to figure it out on your own. Each artist has a different amount of followers, different amounts of interest, a different, different work ethic, um, different supply and demand, different experience, different quality artwork, different pretty much everything. So asking someone else to figure out your price is pretty much impossible. Another thing to think about is how you present your commissions or artwork to others. You don't want to start selling at a high price, then not sell your artwork, and then lower your price. This gives the viewer the impression that if they wait a longer period of time, the prices will drop even more. What you want to do is create a sense of urgency, so start low and then go higher. As in, if I wait longer, the prices will be even higher. So I want to buy right now while it's cheaper. 
If you do it the opposite, people will wait until you hit your lowest point before purchasing, and that's not what you want to do. So you might be thinking, but hey, what about discounts and sales? And I personally never held any sort of discount or sale on my original artworks or commissions. This works wonders if you sell prints and you want to unload your inventory, but for original artwork, it's the same concept as starting high and lowering. People will then begin to wait until you have sales to buy your artwork. The only way this could possibly work for you is if you only want to do a few commissions at any given point in time, like maybe one, one a month or something, and your prices are correct, which means you know what you can ask for a commission, and then you may need a whole bunch of money really fast. So you could lower your art price with a sale to your actual legit worth of artwork, meaning like, you think of it in supply and demand terms. It's sort of like pricing to keep and then changing it to pricing to sell based on how much work you need to take on to make the money that you need. Still, I don't recommend this because it shows your audience that you lower your prices at times. However, this is the safest way to do sales as long as you make it work for you personally. I, like I said, I don't really recommend doing this. Something else that is very important to mention is that the market for art is oversaturated due to the sheer amount of artists trying to sell their artwork online. It used to be so much easier to get decent prices for your art back in the day because there was less competition. Now people can find whatever artist they want online and buy whatever they want at a very competitive price. This is just the reality of the world as we know it at this point in time, so please don't take it personally if it's difficult to find customers or the customers don't treat you very nicely. Since everyone prices their artwork low now, it brings in a lot of customers who may treat the artist poorly. Hey, and it also affects other markets online too. Like my mom collects antiques and stuff and she started selling her collectibles online, except the items are much less rare or difficult to acquire, so the price has severely dropped for those items. It's the same idea here, and it's just the truth, and it really sucks. And lastly, this is where I wanna talk a little about what I see other artists recommending to people when they start selling. And this is where I get a bit controversial, and I really don't mean to be, but it's the reality as I see it. And I'm just going to flat out say that nobody cares how long it takes you to create an artwork. Nobody cares about minimum wage, and nobody cares if you put 30 hours into a work of art. Nobody cares if you had to pay for a Copic refill. Nobody cares about new watercolor pans. Nobody cares about canvases and nobody cares about the paper that you bought. It's not the buyer's responsibility to care about that stuff or to fund that stuff. When I get a tree taken down by a contracting guy, I don't pay him based on how long it takes him to remove the tree from my lawn. I pay him for the job that he's doing. If you're getting a driveway put in, the materials that the contractor purchased will be included in the receipt as part of the price, right? In that case, it makes perfect sense because the materials to do a job like that cost a lot of money and a contractor isn't going to bite the bullet and buy the gravel, concrete, bricks, or lumber or whatever for whatever you hired him to do. However, the price of what we use to make a piece of artwork is so minuscule that charging an extra dollar or two seems really petty. If you really want the cost of materials to be factored into your price, you can do that. But I suggest only doing that if you're selling a full-blown painting, you know, where you had to buy an individual canvas and that you had to use expensive artist quality acrylic or oil paints and mediums and things like that. In that case, it makes much more sense because the, the, the price of the supply is so expensive and you're using a lot more of it. If you're doing a pencil sketch for someone, or if you're doing a watercolor painting, charging someone for the supplies seems really ridiculous to me. I guess to conclude this little section, 
both customers and companies don't care at all how long it takes you to complete your artwork. As in, people are trying to buy an item, not pay you per hour for a service. Trying to figure out what you're worth per hour is immensely more difficult to do. So let's say you take one hour usually to complete a picture. Maybe one day it takes you two hours rather than one hour to complete a picture. You're essentially doubling your price, and this looks really shady and is very confusing to the buyer as you don't seem very transparent. Or let's say you're a new artist and you take a long time to complete a picture. So even at minimum wage, if a picture takes you seven hours or something like that, you'd be charging 70 to $80 for a picture. And if you're just learning how to draw, your art simply isn't worth that amount. And I understand that time is worth money, but it doesn't exactly apply that way for art pricing. Okay, and one other thing to mention is just because a family member commissions you to do an artwork for some reason and pays you a really generous amount of money does not mean that that is what your artwork is worth online. Chances are your family is simply trying to be nice to you. And I see this so much and I know that they're trying to be nice, but it's also kind of deluding younger kids into thinking their stuff is worth much more than they can realistically get for it online from an actual customer that is a stranger. This is pretty much all I have to say regarding commission pricing. I can't really think of anything I didn't touch upon, but if anyone has any questions regarding pricing artwork that I didn't go over, please leave those questions down below. I will do things the way I did in my previous video about art commissions, where I'll take some questions and pin them to the top and answer them, so please check there if you have any questions that you want answers to. Once again, I really didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings with this video, and I'm really sorry if I did. I tried to be as brutally honest as possible um, because in my mind that's the only way I can really make a video that is actually helpful to you. And I see so many other artists talk about commissions and when I listen to what they say I think it's complete bullshit. I mean it's all a whole bunch of things that you want to hear but it's not the truth. And I respect you all enough to not bullshit you and give you the truth. So I really hope you found this helpful. Um, that was my intention by making this video. And I love you guys so much. And I'll speak to you again next week if you don't totally hate my guts. Oh, I love you. Bye. <laughs>